lies on the well of Iraqi oil. The ethnically diverse city contains 40% of the country's oil exportation, while representing just 2.2% of its territory. The town is located in the northern region of Iraq, around 250 kilometers from Baghdad. And with the recent withdrawal of US troops, protecting this veritable gold mine is a high priority. The oil-rich province has been the setting for many disputes over the years. The town's troubled history and uncertain future is leaving many regional and foreign investors anxious to preserve their lucrative oil reserves. Kirkuk is home to a diverse mix of Turkmen, Kurds and Arabs. But despite its wealth on paper, the local population live on the edge of poverty, blaming the city's administration for the unemployment, poor investment and ethnic conflicts. The whole world lives on our expense, from our oil, especially Kirkuk. We're really tired. We're, we're deprived of electricity, of water. We don't have work and instead of helping us, they bomb us. Instead of protecting us, they send explosions. Nobody recruits me. Why? Because I'm Turkmen. If I were Kurdish or Shiite, or if I belonged to another ethnic group, I would be able to find work. I have three daughters to support. I have rent to pay. Why should I have to earn my living doing manual labor? Do you think that's fitting for an educated person? To regulate the flow of investments, national commissions have been created. It's hoped this initiative will identify the most important areas for potential investment in the region. The president of Kirkuk's Investment Commission explains. Kirkuk is very rich in oil and it's become an attractive option for foreign investment. It's a strategic city as it links central Iraq with the Kurdistan region. Huge agricultural fields are estimated to have up to 2 million hectares of fertile soil. We've given 17 investment authorizations in different fields, among them housing projects, industry and plastic production. Kirkuk does have a lot of economic potential, but many investors fear the uncertainty surrounding its investment regulations, arbitration laws and tax structure. This lawyer and human rights activist worries bureaucracy and insecurity are putting off much needed investors. The investors in Kurdistan could complete all the administrative procedures within half an hour. All they need is approval from the ministry and the contact signature to start their company. But in Kirkuk it's complicated. We need to make these bureaucratic procedures a lot simpler to encourage investment in Kirkuk. Moreover, the investors have to take into consideration expenses and assure the security of the staff and the project. Because because of the region's overall problems with security. The governor of Kirkuk was appointed head of the local government seven months ago. His main priority now is to tackle the implementation of the petrodollar project, a move which could create much needed jobs. Investors have been coming here and making proposals to invest in different fields. Uh, some of the problems with investment, it's really not security. It's some of the regulations in Baghdad. Uh, in Kirkuk, we have an issue which is called land dispute. You know, people who land have been taken before, uh, confiscated by the government and given to the others. And these people have come back and now they reclaim their land. Uh, but we're starting to work on that. Uh, for example, uh, you know, very soon we will be uh, giving large plots of lands uh, for housing projects in Kirkuk. Kirkuk witnessed several terrorist attacks last year, where hundreds of civilians lost their lives. In August, the Syrian Catholic Church became the latest target. In such a volatile environment, investors are calling for the Iraqi government to guarantee security for their investment projects. 
Pierre Cook, évidemment, est un Pierre cas Cook encore... Pierre Cook est évidemment un cas très particulier. D'abord, son niveau d'insécurité est encore relativement élevé. Mais, en addition à ça, il y a une légale incertitude. Pierre Cook est partie de ce qu'on appelle une zone disputée, où la boundary administrative entre la région autonome de Kurdistan et le reste de l'Irak n'a pas encore été déterminée, c'est-à-dire des difficultés additionnelles. Et le reste de l'Irak n'a pas encore été totalement déterminé. Donc c'est une difficulté euh, effectivement supplémentaire. Coping with just 14 hours of electricity a day, local councils are hoping to resolve the problem by buying power from neighboring Kurdistan. Before 2003, the province of Kirkuk consumed 180 megawatts. Now the consumption level is estimated at 850. The electricity supply available doesn't cover even a quarter of the region's needs. Besides the insecurity, bureaucracy and social problems that discourage investment in Kirkuk, corruption is yet another obstacle to overcome, according to experts. The lack of investment in the region is caused by many things, such as interior conflicts between the Kurdistan region and the central government over ownership of land. This reduces the investment value. Investors won't come to a city with litigation problems or where there's a threat to security. With international and regional competition, it is possible for regional countries to play a role in weakening Iraq's investments, for them to benefit. These conflicts are well known in Turkey, Iran and the USA. And do Iraqi decision makers really want to attract investors? Because the reality is, there are high levels of corruption throughout the country. We hope the economy of Kirkuk will be managed by technocrats. The case of Kirkuk's current oil situation can be illustrated by a simple image of a cow eating grass in Kirkuk but getting milked by other regions. Although local government provides investors with all the necessary facilities, they don't help financially. But despite all the obstacles, some minor projects have been accomplished, thanks to the personal initiatives of local investors. Kak Niro Najim Kirkuki has invested 58 million euros in Kirkuk. I have successfully completed a lot of entertainment and housing projects. I've also built amusement parks, and marriage halls. It's my love for Kirkuk that motivates me to put up investments. I don't want to invest in other cities. My current project is a housing development called Nur City. And we've already made deals with Italian developers. Many local investors are defying the potential pitfalls and risks to personal safety, remaining resolute in their plans to succeed in Kirkuk. It was a real challenge to carry out this project and for me as an entrepreneur to work on a construction site. Why? Because of the kidnapping. One of my relatives was kidnapped while working on site. And how did the kidnapper know he was our relative? We had an employee who'd been working with us for 25 years. We trusted him, but he betrayed us. He ate and drank with us every day, all the while plotting against us. They kidnapped him, and then they killed him. Kirkuk may have its fair share of problems, but its potential is undeniable. But with foreign investment still hesitant, could local entrepreneurs provide the key to kick-starting its as-yet-untapped economy?